Amen. Amen. We don't like spending time on the potter's wheel. Amen. Right. But it's there that uh, we take on the form He wants us to take on. Amen. Come on, say it. The potter will take that clay and put it on the wheel and then He'll mold it into the shape and the image yeah. that He wants it to be molded. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. And once He gets it to the shape that He wants, they tell Him it has to be heated up then in order for it to get hard and, yeah. and keep its shape. So we all have to go through things. Amen. Amen. But as uh, someone may mention up here tonight, I think that, that you go through them for a reason. All Amen. Right. All things work together for good. To them that are, love, love God and are called according to His purpose. Amen. Yeah. All things. I don't understand it, but I believe it because the Word of God says it. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Most of you know Brother Mike was supposed to be here tonight to minister, and he got in touch with me this afternoon, and not going to be was not going to be able to be here. Lord willing, he'll be here next Tuesday night, maybe. Hallelujah. Pray for Brother Mike going through a lot of things right now. Turn in your Bibles to Psalms, the 53rd chapter. Psalms 53. Brother Carter said something Sunday morning that uh, stuck with me. He said several things. Actually, I thought he did. I thought he did a real good job preaching, and uh, he'll be with us the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of June for revival. Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning. I'll be uh, making up a flyer of that and uh, giving you all a copy of it. But he said something, he, and he was talking about going on a trip, and I can't tell you exactly what he said, but he was talking about whenever you get ready to go on a trip, you make sure that your tank has fuel in it. All right. Enough fuel to get you where you're going. Amen. And I thought about those virgins over there, of course, that's where my mind went, which I'm sure that's what he was talking about that didn't have any oil. Amen? Yeah. And I got to thinking about how that most Christians, and I don't say this with any joy at all because it saddens me to say this, but I believe it to be the truth. Most, not all, thank God. But a lot, anyway, of Christians don't have enough fuel to get them from one service to the next, much less to endure to the end. Amen? Amen. They are on empty. And if they have church on Sunday, they're on empty by the time Wednesday gets there. Amen? Right. Or whatever day they have service. And then... Between Wednesday or their midweek service till Sunday, they're really going on fumes. Amen? Right. But God has enough, if we want it, Brother Dave, Amen. to keep us excited for Him. Amen? Amen. It doesn't, we don't have to have some newfangled thing in order to excite us. That's right. Jesus is enough. Right. Yeah. Jesus is enough. Amen. If we get our hearts right with Him, we'll realize that Jesus is enough. Uh, Amen? This, the church is not full tonight because we don't have something that they want to entertain them. Amen? Right. Amen. If you want a crowd, you can get a crowd by entertainment. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Just look at the concerts. Not just in the world, but in the church. Come on. When most churches have a gospel group, if they're a well-known gospel group, yeah. you can't find enough seats for them to sit. Amen? Right. Yeah. But when it just comes down to the old-fashioned preaching of the Word of God, yeah. it's kind of hard to get a crowd anymore. That's right. Amen? But if it takes compromising and entertaining to get a crowd, we'll just stay with the faithful few. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. But he got me thinking along the lines of those foolish virgins, and that brought me to this Scripture here in Psalms, the 53rd chapter, the first verse. The Bible says, and this is David, a Psalm of David, says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Now many today have said this, maybe not so much with their mouth, Brother Scott, as it is with their actions. Right. Amen? True. You can tell me one thing with your mouth, uh, but if I see you living something else, that makes me question what you believe. Amen? amen? True. Yeah. Actions, the world's got to say, and actions speak louder than words. Than words. Right. You tell me you love me all the time. Yeah. You treat me like I got the plague, I'm going to begin to doubt your word. Amen? <laughs> I'm going to get into doubt whether you love me or not. Come on. But the Bible says the fool has said in his heart yeah. that there is no God. Yeah. And that led me over to Luke, the 12th chapter. Jump over there. Luke, the 12th chapter. And I'm not going to keep you but a few minutes. Unless the Lord just makes me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Luke, the 12th chapter, the 16th verse, we're going to look at a fool for a few minutes. Now, I didn't call this man a fool. The Lord did. We're going to look at a foolish man. And we find a lot of truths in this Scripture right here that mirror a lot of the actions of people in the world that we live in today. Jesus, and He's speaking a parable here, Luke 12 and 16, and He spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. I'm in Luke 12 and 16. Now let's stop there for a minute and ask ourselves, why did the ground of this rich man, why did it bring forth plentifully? More than likely he had spent all that he had to see that it brought forth plentifully. Right. He had spent all of his time. He had, split, he had spent all of his money. There was no room for God in this man's life as we'll find out here in just a few minutes with his own words. You know, with your words you'll be justified. With your own words you'll be condemned. He's fixing to tell us what his heart is. And if you get around somebody and you're around them long enough, they'll tell you where their heart's at. They may not intend to, Brother Dave, but the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen? Amen? So when you get around somebody and all they can talk about is Jesus, well, glory to God, you know where their heart's at. Amen? That's right. When you get around somebody and all they can talk about is their favorite TV show, yeah. hello? Amen? Their favorite country singer, yeah. hello? Amen? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Yeah. So this rich man is fixing to tell on himself. Right. We're fixing to get a glimpse into the heart of this rich man right. whose ground brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Now we can stop there and ask you, what did he do? Was he thankful for what God gave? Is he fixing to make plans on how he can use his wealth and his plenty, plenteous of, uh, of his crop that was, that was bountiful? Is he trying to figure out how he can use that for the work of God? Maybe he's sitting somewhere trying to figure out what his tithe would be. No, we don't see anything about being thankful. We don't see anything about him paying his tithe. Amen? Right. He said, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. No, we don't find any gratitude. We don't find any thanksgiving. We don't find any time for God here. Right. And it's within these words of wisdom that Jesus spoke that we find a large percentage of mankind today. They have no time for God. They're too busy working. Come on. Once they retire, then maybe yeah. they'll have time for God. Maybe that's what this rich man was thinking. Yeah. But he's fixing to come into a rude awakening. Amen? Right. He thought he had all kinds of days ahead of him. That's the way the world is today. Yeah. Living like this world, living like this life is forever. Right. When James said this life is a vapor, it appeareth for a little while and it, then it vanishes away. Amen? Right. We are here today and we are gone tomorrow. Amen. And the only thing that matters is our relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen? Come on. Not our bank account. When you stand before God, He's not going to He's not going to want to know how many treasures you had in this life. He's not going to take stock of your bank account and the way you dealt with your portfolio. Amen. He's going to look at your heart, and He's going to find out where your treasure was. Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We find out about this rich man. We find out where his treasure was at. We find out where his heart was at. Amen. That's right. He speaks from his heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right. And he thought within in himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Mm -hmm. And he said, This will I do. I go to church and start paying my tithe. That ain't what he said. No. Now I have time for God. I'm wealthy. Mm -hmm. No, because see, what he had wasn't enough. Right. Brother Hinton said one time, if you ask a rich man how much money does it take to satisfy you, he'll say just a little bit more. Yep. Amen. Greed takes over somewhere down the line. Amen. Greed had taken over the heart of this rich man. Mm -hmm. He had no time for God. We don't find him saying with his mouth there is no God, but we find him saying it with his actions. Right. He has no time for God. That's where we find many people today, and it's sad. Right. It's sad. Amen. Amen. 
Ask somebody. You won't have to ask very many people before somebody uses this excuse. Well, I've just been working all the time. Ask you where they've been. How come the pew's been empty? Been working all the time. Yeah. Ask them how come they hadn't been to church in six months. Now, I know you got to work. Don't get me wrong. Ask them how come they hadn't been to church in six months. Been working all the time. Then I'll tell you how they went to Holiday World last Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Oh. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Amen. And he thought within himself, what shall I do? Because I had no room to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater because what I've got ain't enough. Even though my crops are plenteous, even though I'm wealthy, Brother Tyler, yeah. that's still not enough. Got to have more. Come on. Greed gets a, heart of, gets a hold of the heart of man. Yes. And it's never enough. Nothing is ever enough. Amen. The eye is never satisfied. The flesh is never satisfied. Come on, That's where all oh, that gets right to the root yeah. of our being today. Amen. Amen. The flesh is never satisfied. Right. And where we miss it is we spend too much time, too much time trying to please the flesh and not enough time trying to please God. Amen. Amen, right. Brother Billy. Amen. I'm preaching to me today too. Amen. If it's hitting you, it's done hit me. He said, I will build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. How much rich man do you need? Just a little bit more. Yeah. My barns are full. Am I satisfied? No, I'm going to build a bigger barn. Yeah. Amen. On. I'm working 40 hours a week. Am I satisfied? No, I'm going to work 50. i got to keep up with the neighbors. I'm working 50 hours. Hey, can I get some overtime? Maybe I work 60. Do I have time for God? Well, that's not that important. We put Him on the back burner. Most people won't tell you that God's not important, but their actions say something else. All right. Amen? Come on. This rich man had put God off. Amen. Nowhere in anything he says do you hear anything about God. Amen? Right. Listen. Oh, my, my. I'm too, I will build bigger. So I have a place to bestow my fruits and my goods. What's he say in verse 19? And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Now listen to that foolish talk. Many years. None of us are promised tomorrow. Yeah, right. Yet we act like we're here forever. Amen? Absolutely. I go to church next week. I'll start paying my tithe next month. Yeah, exactly. I'll be more faithful to God later. Yeah. You don't even know if you have a later. Tonight be, may be your last night on planet Earth. That's right, brother. Amen. Come on. Tomorrow they may be dressing you out down at the funeral home. Right. Amen. Tell us. None of us. And this rich man, he has. A, you might say, well, he's just a fool. Well, mm -hmm. most of the most of the world today doesn't act any different than this man was acting. Right. He said, I'll say to myself, soul. Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. He didn't even know if he had tomorrow, let alone many years. Amen. Mom. None of us are promised tomorrow. Amen. I tell them this, this all the time on the radio. Yeah. Get right with Jesus today. None of us are promised tomorrow. Don't wait until it's too late. Because when it's too late with God, it is too late. Amen? Yeah. There's no yeah. going back, Brother Scott, and changing things. There's no way to go back and do things over. There's no reincarnation. As a tree fallen, so shall it lie. You have one time to get this right, and if you don't, you will spend eternity in hell wishing you had got it right. Absolutely. Amen? You spend your whole life working for things. Laying up treasures on this earth where that thieves can break in and take it and rust and moths can get to. Exactly. Things that don't amount to a hill of beans. Exactly. And you'll miss out on the most important thing of all. Oh, tell it. That's where we find this rich man. That's where we find most people today. Yes, sir. A lot the largest percentage of people today. Exactly. How do you know it, Brother Billy? I know that because the Bible says the scripture that I tried to quote earlier earlier. Straight is the gate. Narrow the way. Few there be that find it. Amen. But the way to destruction is broad. And many there be that enter in there at. So I know today that the percentage is larger of those that are like this rich man. Amen. 
So he says, for many years, and he says, I'll take thy knees. He's talking to himself. Yeah. Take thy knees. So if you think you're crazy, well, here's God about me. <laughs> take thy knees. Yeah. Eat, drink, and be merry. Enjoy the pleasures of life. Yeah. Ignore God. Just run the rat race. Stay busy. Make money. When you make that money, make some more money. And when you make that money, make some more money. The, I know we all got to have money, but the, it's whenever money got you is when the, when, when the problem sets in. Amen? Oh, the you. love of money is the root of all evil. If you find yourself so greedy that you can't give to God, you got a problem. Amen? If you find yourself so greedy that enough just ain't enough, you got a problem today. Come on, brother. This rich man had a problem. Right. So he said, I'll be here for many years. Yeah. I'm going to eat, I'm going to drink, I'm going to live it up. Come on. Oh, verse 20. God knocks on his door. Yeah. But God said unto him, Thou fool. Next year? No. 15 years from now? No. This night, no. thy soul shall be required of thee. Amen. Then who shall these things, shall those things be which thou hast provided? You can fill your barns and you can plan on living it up forever. Yeah. You may be dead before the clock strikes midnight. Amen. That's the truth. He said, oh, I'll just live it up. I've got plenty. Yeah. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to eat. I'm going to drink. I'm going to be merry. Exactly. And God said, This night thy soul is required of you, Amen. you foolish man. You're a fool. Right. Because you've got everything that you think you need, but you've left God out of the equation. Come on. Talk to people all the time. Nice home, nice clothes, nice car, yeah. good education, good job, busy all the time. Yeah. And they've left the most important thing out of it. They put God on the back burner. Right. Oh, my, 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 my. Right. Honey, give me a little shack in the holler in oh. Jesus than a mansion on the hill and a soul that's lost and undone without God. Come on, freak. That's where this rich man was at. Yes, sir. He had everything the world had to offer right. and wanted more of it. Amen. This night thy soul will be required of thee. Let me ask Amen. you this something tonight. If your soul was required of you tonight, where would you stand with your Maker? Where would you stand with your Maker? Where would your stockpile of treasures be? Would they be in Independence Bank? Would they be in First Security Bank? Would they be in First Kentucky Bank? Would they be in Fifth Third Bank? Would they be tied up in Wall Street? Or would your treasures be laid up in the heavenlies? Oh, Thank God. this man had laid up his treasures. And God asked him, I love it the way the Lord does things. He said, whose things will these be now? Yeah. You're just going to leave them behind for somebody to fight over. Oh, they'll mourn you yeah. for about 15 minutes. Yeah. Then they'll all start trying to figure out who's going to get the stuff. Come on. Amen. That's right. They, I, I, listen. I know of people that have fought at funeral homes right. over a shirt that one of them was wearing of the man that was dead in the casket. One of the sons was wearing the daddy's shirt and the other son wanted it. So they took it out behind the building to work things out. Oh. Fighting over the daddy's shirt and he ain't even got cold in the grave yet. Oh. Who shall these things be when you're dead and gone? What are you leaving behind? Something that thieves can get? Something that can be that can rust and, and, and that the moles can corrupt? Or are you leaving behind a heavenly treasure? Something priceless that cannot be tarnished? Come on, Brother Bill, I preach. And listen, you say, what has this got to do with me? Uh -huh. What's verse 21 say? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So is he what? Right. He's a fool just like this man was. Right. So is he what? Foolish. Amen? Leaving yeah. God on the back burner. Exactly. Oh, the most important thing in this life is not your education. Yes. The most important thing in life is not your bank account. Come on. Not your job, not your wealth, not your money, not your clothes. Right. 
The most important thing in this life is your relationship with Jesus. Amen. If you leave that undone, what have you gained? What's the Bible say? What does it profit a man if he gains the world and loses his soul? Oh, the Word of God, sharper and powerful. Amen. And then two edges forward. Amen. If you drop all the way down to verse 34, what's he say there in Luke 12 and 34? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Matthew 6 and 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right. Amen. Amen. All these things. Yeah. Go with me to Matthew the 7th chapter, and I'm closing. Matthew the 7th chapter. <clears throat> Let's look at another foolish man. Matthew, the seventh chapter, the twenty fourth verse. We find here in this passage of Scripture two men. One was foolish, the Bible says, the other was wise. Right. Both men. Living life, both working, both going through things, both going through a storm. Oh. And only one left standing in the end. Right. See, whether you make it tonight doesn't depend on your <laughs> earthly wealth. Amen. But your heavenly treasure. Yeah. Amen. True. Let's see what the word of God says. Matthew 7 and 24. Jesus speaking, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. All right. Amen. Mom. And the rain descended, mm -hmm. and the floods came, yep. and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Now this first man we look at, he's got a lot of things in common with the second man that we'll look at. Both of them are going to build a house. Both of them are going to work. Both of them are going to go through the storm. But only one of them is going to be left standing. Why? Because one of them put God first. Amen. Sought first the kingdom of God. Obeyed the word of God. Amen. Wow. Was not just a hearer and a forgetful hearer. Amen. He was a doer of what he heard. Amen. Right. He was a wise man. Amen. He was a wise man. Come on. You set me down with the greatest professor that the world has ever known. Yeah. Got all the degrees. <laughs> and don't believe there's a God. And then take me out into the sticks to some old grandpa that never even finished first grade, and if he knows Jesus, and if he knows the Word, and if he's living for God, there's where you'll find wisdom. Not in the great colleges of America. Amen? The old gray-haired man out in the sticks and gets along with Jesus and prays and seeks the face of God. That's true wisdom. Don't try to, to impress me with your knowledge. Amen? I had an elder this past week. I say he's an elder because that's what he used in his name. He was elder somebody, so and so. And I might have been impressed except for the fact he didn't know what he was talking about. He was trying to correct me on the sermon that I preached about the love of God. He said God does not love sinners. He's going to destroy sinners. I thought, how foolish can you be? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't do that because He hated us. He did that because He loved us. While we were yet sinners, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen? Amen. He loves you. He don't love your sin. Right. But if you'll turn to Him, you'll find love. Absolutely. If you'll put your faith in Him, you will find love. i got to hurry. Amen. i got to hurry. Praise the Lord. Uh, the rains came and the floods came and the winds blew. God. And it stood because it was founded upon a rock. But listen, mm. verse 26. And he said, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. Now it don't matter what reason you use, what excuse you use right. to put God off. Amen. You can think that laying up enough money for your kids' education is reason enough to put God on the back burner, but it ain't. Right. You can think that a nicer home and a nicer car is something worth putting God on the back burner for, but it ain't. Amen. 
He doesn't go into any reasons why this man was not a doer. Amen? Only the fact that he heard the words, but he did them not make him a fool. It made him foolish regardless of the reason. Amen. You can stand before God one day and try to justify yourself and you will stand there a fool. Amen. If you neglected the most important thing. Amen. Even though you worked your whole life and you was a good person. But you yeah. neglected God in your relationship with Him. Amen. Now listen, I'm facing close, I promise. So here we find a man and what he do? <clears throat> he built just like the wise man did. So he had to go and get some material. He had to work. He had to put sweat into his work. But he builds upon the sand. Amen. The temporal things and not the eternal things. Yeah. Amen. Now here comes the storm, the same storm that hit the wise. Yeah. The rain descended. Come on. See, if you think today just because you know Jesus, you ain't going to go through something, you're in for a rude awakening one of these days. Amen. Amen. I know you heard Brother So-and-so on TV say, everything going to come up roses. Yeah. He's full of baloney. Amen. Uh -huh. True. Jesus never said you wouldn't go through something. That's oh, but He said when you go through it, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is with me. Amen. So here comes the storm. And what's it say? It says the same thing. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, except there's a different outcome. And it fell. And great was the fall of it. Both of these men lived life. Both built. Both worked. Both faced storms. But one of them had forgotten what was most important. Yes. He kept putting God off. Amen. He kept putting God on the back burner. Right. He was like that rich man over there that was going to build his bigger barns. Amen. He took some shortcuts. How many people want somebody taking shortcuts if they built you a house? Amen. <laughs> well, the foundation ain't what it ought to be. Well, if it ain't, you better not build on it. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Life is a vapor. Yes. I got that scripture up here. I want to read it to you. James says in James 4 and 14, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Amen. Amen. It would, be, it would have done that rich man some good to have known that. When he said, I've got a lot of stuff that will last me many years. It would have done him some good if he knew that his life was not only a vapor, but it was going to vanish yeah. that night. Amen. Amen. True. Life is a vapor. I don't get the idea tonight that you need to join a convent. You don't ever need to work. You need to go join a cult somewhere, live in a little village, cook your own stuff, grow your own crop, grow a beard down to you, navel, and never come out into society again. The Bible instructs us to occupy until He comes. Amen. Amen. None of us can sit in a rocking chair on the front porch and watch the eastern sky all the time. Amen. None of us can pray continually at least, and I'm talking about on your knees and on your face, we can pray continually in our spirit and inside. Amen? Right. But as far as being able to go into our prayer closet and never come back out again, we can't do that. Amen. There are things that have to be done. Amen? That's right. There is life. There is provisions that must be made. Right. But woe unto us. Listen to me. Woe unto us tonight if this life consumes us to the point that God has no place in it. Amen. Amen. See, it, it's not a, so bad having things. It's when things has you, right. that's whenever the problem sets in. Amen. It wasn't that that rich man had all those crops and all those riches. Those riches had that rich man. Amen. Amen. Right. And he couldn't shake them. Come on. He was eaten up by them. Come on, preach. So woe unto anyone today if you're out there and you think you can do good without God and you can live your life mm -hmm. and make a living and you can work and God will be okay with that and you can neglect Him to the end and then maybe you'll get right. I wouldn't want to chance it. A lot of people die instantly Amen. with no chance to make things right with God. This rich man thought he had many years. He probably went to bed that night thinking, Woo, I'll get up tomorrow and do something great. Dead on a doornail next morning. 
Amen. Amen. Dead in the doornail. We all have to occupy till He comes. Absolutely. But we must put Him first in our life. Amen. Amen. True. Listen to this. Matthew 6 and 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. I wish we could get this. Amen. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. And that is all that will really matter in the end. Yes. Is where was your heart? Where yeah, was your treasure? Absolutely. Did you lay up treasures on this earth? Did those treasures have such a hold on you that you had no time for God? Exactly. No time for church? Mm. No time for prayer? No time for His Word? Right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Amen. Amen. Put God first. Amen. Put God first. Right. Because in the end, that's all that will matter. matter. Yes. Amen. Someone else have something tonight.